Hello and welcome back to our Beginner's Guide series on Farming Simulator 22. Uh, today is a new day. It's November. And I think the first thing we're going to do today is expand our farm. So if we go into the main menu and go to the map, we can look for farmland. Now, I want to buy one of the fields next to us. So this one is 56,800, that one's 49,000, that one's 64,400, but if we come back here, we can see that field 47 and 49 have soybeans on them, field 48 has barley on it. If we look at growth, field 47 and 49 are ready to harvest. If we go back into farmland. That's 64,000, that's 56,000. Let's go ahead and buy the cheaper of the two that's ready to harvest, that's right connected to our land. So, we can hit the buy button here. Yes, we would like to buy this land. So now, we have a new field. Let's walk over and look at it. Just over here, on the other side of this hedgerow, This is now our field, and it has soybeans that are ready to harvest, so let's go get our harvester and get these harvested, see how much money we make back off of this. Soybeans use the regular header that uh, other cereal grains use. So we don't need a special header or anything. We already have the equipment to harvest it. Should be able to hook this header trailer right to the harvester. There we go. Just hit Q to hook that up. We'll drive this right over to the field. Go ahead and leave this trailer here. It should be fine for now. And to hook this header back up to it, we just have to drive up fairly centered. Hit Q to hook it up to it. I'll go ahead and harvest this soybeans and then get back with you. Okay, so that's the soybean harvest complete. We only got 3,600 liters off of there. If we look at our calendar, see there's not really anything to plant right now. So we don't need to worry about this field uh, for a while. Plant cotton, but that requires all that extra. The next thing we can plant, probably oats. Maybe sorghum April would be a good one. If we plant sorghum, then we can use this for chicken feed. 
oh, in August, if we plant in April, in August we can harvest it, and then we can buy chickens, and we will have the feed that we need for the chickens. So sometime between now and November and April, we'll get this field ready. That'll give us something to do on a day we're not doing anything. But if we look at our graph, we now have soybeans, which fairly profitable. Feeding grain south has it for $1,853. The green arrow means that the price is going up currently. But the price best in July, $3,700. So we'll go ahead and put these soybeans in our silo and we'll sell them in July. That way we get the best price back for them. And we'll get this header put back on a trailer and the harvester put away. So since we have a less than a full harvester's worth of crop, we didn't need to put it into a trailer, but we can pipe it out directly into this input. We don't need to put it in a trailer first, if I line up properly with the input. There we go. So now that's going directly into our silo. We can pull under that with a trailer and trigger it to build a trailer. Now that that's in there, we go back to this screen. It'll show that we have 3,608 liters in storage soybeans. That's a good way to keep track of what you have in your silos. Once we get this put away, we'll uh, take a look at building a new shed for some of this equipment. Okay, now with that all put away, if we look at our map, that land that we just bought isn't just the field itself, but it's also the grass and path around it. If we go look at that, the field that we bought happens to have a nice flat grassy area that I think would be perfect for a shed right over here. So if we hit shift and P, that'll bring up our build menu. Q and E rotate around, your WASD moves the screen. You can also mouse to the edge of the screen to move around. Uh, if you hold down your scroll button, if you have the third mouse button, you can move the camera position around and then scroll wheel in and out, zooms in for you. So we'll move over here. We're gonna build a shed here. So under buildings, the first buildings we have are sheds. Your scroll wheel will let you uh, scroll through these. Uh, we also have silos, silo extensions. So you have your regular silos, and then a silo extension is built next to a regular silo, and it just expands the capacity of that silo. So we have this 250,000 liter silo that if we build it next to this silo, it would expand the capacity of this whole silo setup. It doesn't have its own input. It just expands capacity. Uh, we have containers which are used for fuel or water usually. Tools like a repair shop. We have a little weather gauge that improves the weather predictivity. Which, if we go in here, have this and it shows you what your weather's likely to do not the most accurate but it gives you a vague idea of what's going to happen with the weather um, weather is important because if it is raining or snowing your harvest yield is 
significantly lower. So you never want to harvest if it's raining or snowing outside. Uh, as far as the game's concerned, that's basically the only function that weather has within the game. If we go back to this screen, uh, we were on tools. So, yeah, we have weather. We have a workshop you can build where you can repair and customize your vehicles. Um, we have electric charging station, biomethane station. We have scales, which are used only for realism. Uh, they surprisingly are accurate. Like if you go go over it, it does give you a, an accurate or what seems to be accurate within game readout. Uh, you have several farm. Oh, on the base you only have two farmhouses to choose from. The one that we have, and then there's a cheaper mobile version. If you get some of the expansions, you'll get several more farmhouses you can choose from which are nice when you're building your own farm from scratch somewhere. Production has our factories. So these are biogas factories, bakeries, spinneries, dairies. Um, and these are inputs where you buy it, you provide the resources to it, and it will make them. So like this is a spinnery. The spinnery takes cotton or wool and it turns it into fabric and fabric you get a much better price on fabric than you do raw cotton or wool and then you also have a tailor shop which then takes the fabric that you can make in a spinnery it makes it into clothes and again you get a much better price for clothes than you do even just for fabric so those are the production chains and how you set those up we'll go over a production chain later on in the series Go buy one, set one up. Um, you don't necessarily have to build these. They do have them throughout the map on these base maps. Uh, like this one right here. It is a fast food restaurant. Um, and you can sell things to that right now. Through this input right here. Or you can buy the fast food restaurant. Uh, actually, fast food restaurant might be sell point only. But there is the bakery right down the street. So I know the bakery here. You can buy the bakery. And that's why it has the little uh, wrench icon here. So you buy the bakery. You put in your inputs. And then it'll output goods for you or you can sell directly to them there's a whole lot to productions but productions bring in much more income and tend to give you things to do uh, moving goods around on your off months when you're not harvesting or sowing crops or anything you have sell points where if the map that you're on doesn't have a place where you can sell something that you want to build you can build your own sell point now oh yeah see there's the diner like this is for rocks you want to sell rocks the rocks you get out of your fields I'm not sure if this map has one of these on it somewhere um, but if it doesn't you can build one yourself and then bring your rocks to it sell them you have greenhouses which you can set up, you input water, you set it to grow vegetables, it outputs vegetables, and then you can sell those. Or you can use the vegetables to feed your productions. There's orchards, so this is where you would buy grapevines, and also olive trees. Oop, can't plant it, yeah, there we go. I just wanted to show it. Generators make you income, though, so like here's a solar panel it costs ninety three thousand dollars to install but you make almost nine thousand dollars a month and once you install it you don't have to do anything else with it you have several types of windmills or wind turbines and here's where you get your animals you have different 
sized paddocks and each of the animals has its own set of inputs that you need to put into it and then you get things out of it like cows you can either get milk out of cows or you can raise cows for beef and sell the cows once they reach a certain age horses you raise just to sell um i assume it's the same with pigs i've never actually done pigs but i assume you just raise them to sell them sheep you get wool from chickens you get eggs bees you get honey uh bees are a little different because you have to put down a hive but then you also have to put a pallet location somewhere on your farm where the where the honey from that beehive will spawn and as far as i know it has a pretty large area so if you want the hives next to your fields and then the pallet location up near the road somewhere that's usually fine and you can buy a doghouse which will give you a little dog that'll wander around your farm for decorations you can build fences so if you're doing something like a fence you click where you want the first one to be you just drag out and then you'll click again left click again and that'll build it if you right click it gets rid of it you have gates and that's all that's in here is fences and gates you have lights that you can dot around your farm sometimes very useful especially if you be farming overnight it gets very dark and so some of the spotlights are really good you also have just decoration sheds these don't really do anything some you may be able to go into some are just for looks and then the ever important landscaping tools <clears throat> so we have the landscaping tools themselves raise and lower terrain flatten terrain smooth out the edges and to build a slope we have painting where you can take a different texture and color the ground with it we have trees where it'll plant trees individual trees now if you want to do logging these trees are not for logging because you won't make as much back on the tree as it costs to plant it most of the time um, and they don't grow so if you plant a baby tree it's going to stay a baby tree and then you have plants where you can paint grass flowers bushes just to make things pretty what we're going to do is come over here where we want to put a shed We'll figure out what shed we want, which I think we're just going to go with this cheap one. See, that looks like that'll fit that area fairly well. Put it somewhere like right there. But before we do that, we're going to use the flatten tool. Flatten it out. So, if we open this up, you can see that K and L changed the brush strength. And that's denoted by the color of the cursor there. The more see-through it is the less strong it's going to function the more solid that color is the more it'll function that's not really as necessary with the flattening but definitely with the softening and with the raising and lowering terrain that changes a lot uh, the brush size is N and M so you can make it a big you can make it pretty small and then v changes the shape so you have a square or a circle and that's about it we'll actually bring it up to about here because then we'll cover mostly the area that this shed will cover and then what we're going to do is just if you see up here level just left click if we left click and hold it'll just flatten that terrain out to where the first spot we started flattening is bring that around just flatten that out a bit and now when we build our shed we're in sheds bring this up that's about good we might want to do a little bit more in the back there you see that it actually cost just over ten thousand that's because it's going to need to do a little terrain work itself if you hit V, that'll do free mode, so it won't 
deform the terrain around it, it'll meld into the terrain, which, depending on which part your cursor's at, because where your cursor is is the level that it's going to go to. So, if you're doing it on a hillier spot like this, and you want it level with this, but you're way out here, it's kind of difficult. Because you see it drops down, it follows the terrain where the cursor is. And then we have C, which will toggle snapping. You see it kind of lined up there. That lines up to the general grid of the whole map. And then you can use your uh, scroll wheel. Oh no. You right click, hold and drag. And that will rotate it by increments. Yeah, I was jumping a little bit at a time. And then if you turn that back off, hit C again. When you right click, it's a smooth drag. You can get much finer control. Let's level out just a little bit further back here. We zoom in, we can see that this falls off pretty steeply. So we'll pull out the level sort of in the center. Bring this out a little bit more towards these trees. Now there's trees down here that will keep you from leveling around them. Items, objects that are in the map won't let you terraform around them. So the tree will stay at that same level. You could bring some of the ground up to it, but then it'll sharply cut off right at the tree. This looks to be about as far back as we're going to go, so we might just need to bring it forward a little bit from what we planned. A little bit more done here. Come out a little forward. Now we don't necessarily have to do this, like I said, it'll um, terraform itself if we don't have free mode on. But it's good to know, if you flatten first, you don't get surprises. If you don't flatten first, and you put a building down not in free mode, sometimes it won't go exactly where you think it's going to go, and you'll get a big dip on one end or the other, because the ground will look fairly flat, but it won't actually be flat. And then, you can't terraform under the building or right up to a building, you'll still get jagged edges and stuff. The terraforming tools in this game are probably the hardest thing to get used to, just because of the way that they function and don't function. Um, there are a lot of mods out there for all of the things in the game, and the I believe it's free terraforming tools, or terraform anywhere. Super, if you want, to do a lot of customizing, a lot of building. Um, they're really useful to get in the mod hub. So they should be available to anybody. But now that we're here... It's gonna be... You see, uh, even as we rotate it, the price changes based on how much it's going to adjust the ground around it. Let's go like this. I want to take a peek on this side because I don't want to push it too far back into the trees. I'm thinking something like right there. We'll just left click and it places it. So now we have this paved piece under the shed with the rest of it just being grass. But what I'd like to do is extend this little path up, maybe bring it right over and connect it to that path. So there's a couple ways to do this. When you're painting, we'll find, we can zoom in and get in the right area. There we go. If you find what kind of texture you want to use, which we don't have this exact texture. We have dirt, asphalt, animal mud, forest ground, grass, and gravel. So, Gravel, I think, is going to be brighter, like the gravel out here. And this is kind of beat up looking. So we'll end up just making this dirt across here. But there's two ways to go about it, two theories of thought. Two schools of thought. You leave cursors as small as it can be, 
and you do two individual paths and that'll leave the grass in the center or you make the cursor bigger maybe even make it round we'll make it as big as we want the path to be probably that one put that in and then go back in and put in a line of grass uh, either way it looks a little janky most of the time you can get super detailed on it use a lot of time um, but there's no undo button so sometimes you'll end up pulling your hair out if you're trying to get super specific with the details uh, I've learned that it's generally better to just use a, a general idea of what you want as opposed to trying to get every blade of grass right where you want it to be. You'll save yourself a lot of time and headache if you learn the phrase, yeah, that's good enough. We'll go ahead and we'll just do this across. And since there will be tractors in and out of here, we might not even make it a path. This looks like a good spot to connect up. It kind of goes up that way anyway. So we'll bring that right in here. Maybe make this a little smaller. Come around so we can see this junction. Move this off because you might want to go that way. That looks about right. And we're even going to, I think, expand it a little bit. Make it a little, little swoop out front of the shed because you'll have tractors turning around and turning in and out of there. <clears throat> if you get on modded maps, you'll end up with a lot more um, plants and textures and stuff that you can play around with. But on the base game, this is what you have. But that doesn't look bad. I mean, that looks fine, right? Yeah, not bad at all. So, now I'm going to go get some of our equipment and get it stored. And there we go. Now all of our equipment is stored in a shed. All of it's in out of the weather to some degree. Uh, if we wanted, we can close these doors, I think. Yeah, doors on this barn close. So we can close this up for the winter. November. That'll keep those nice and dry. We just go look at it and see we have all our equipment stored and we still have room for more over here and that keeps it all in one place and keeps it from being scattered all over the farm we got our nice new field that we bought so 11:30 in the morning that's probably enough for today 
don't have to play out every day till the end, but there's always something to do. Uh, one thing to do in the winter is get your vehicles repaired. Helps to have a workshop on your farm because then you don't have to take them all to the shop. But I think that was fairly expensive. Go back to tools. Yeah, workshop is 45000 We could afford it, but I think I want to save some of our money for some other things. But for 10% of the price, we could buy our washer. It at least we'll, would keep our equipment clean. But we're not going to do that right now. What we are going to do is call that a day. And I will see you in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye.